everybody. Hello, everybody. Today, we're sitting down with O'Shane Thorpe, the co-founder of Go Request It. What's going on, O'Shane? Hello, O'Shane. Hey, what's up? I'm here. I, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes, yeah, exactly. we can hear you. Uh, you. Sound good, man. Okay, okay. All right. Wonderful, How was your day? Wonderful. Oh, today today has been a good day for me. I, I went out to do uh, some chores, you know, and uh, help some of my country mates. They're here from Jamaica on a conference. So just show them around Beijing, show them the real Beijing, because they've been having just a tourist experience so far. Oh, OK. All right. Nice. So now you're becoming a guide, right? <laughs> <laughs> how long you've been, uh, how long exactly. you've been in China? In China? Yes. Uh, I've been I've been in China since since 2012, since September 2012. So I'm going on to my fourth year now. Yeah. Oh wow! What uh what keeps you here? Ah, uh, studies really. My studies keep me here right now. Um, I'm I'm currently enrolled in a PhD. I'm I'm set to graduate next year. So. Uh, after that, I, I probably will stay because of the business and other prospects that I have working on. Okay, so in order to, to give more context, can you um, describe a little bit more your business that you are actually uh, owning? Yeah, what's okay. Go Requested about? Uh, okay, uh, Go Requested initially started off as uh, I, I was worried about how foreigners in China try to get uh, real products, for example, iPhones, Samsungs, or even getting things that are not blocked or locked to China. For example, if you buy a Samsung here, which I've been doing for a while, each time you buy one, you can't put uh, Google Play on it. So even if you travel outside of China, you still have that restriction on it. So at first, I wanted to deal with uh, helping foreigners to get access to brands that they're used to and not locked to China. So that's what really sparked the idea. Um, the rest uh -huh. of the company, uh -huh, it grew as I started to speak to friends. And as I spoke to friends, I found other uh, areas that were lacking uh, in terms of uh, things that we needed to, to work on. So I just started to build from there. I contacted some of my friends to see who would be interested in joining the venture. But um, <laughs> many of them thought it was just too, it's too ambitious and uh, they don't know how we're going to pull it off. So I ended up with only two partners, but they're, they've been the best help I've had so far. So I'm glad it worked out how it did. Oh, that's what's up, man. Really? So, so before uh, your, uh, your, pro your app, uh, Go Request It, um, uh -huh. in China, they didn't have such, the foreigner didn't have a, such a, a platform to be able to request uh, some products? Well, you, you know, foreigners can buy things online in China. You can go to Jindong and buy uh, an iPhone or, or even uh, Samsung. But when you buy them from these websites, they're locked and you can't use certain Western apps on them. For example, Google Play will never work on a phone that you buy in Jindong because it, it's locked to whatever they do to it. So I just wanted to overcome this barrier so that when you leave and go back home, you can, you know, not rely on Baidu and all these Chinese apps to get your things set up on your phone. Uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> all right. Interesting. Yeah. Now, um, yeah. you're, you're, you said that you had uh, partnerships with um, two country mates. Two country mates. Yeah. yeah. So all the, right. when, all I, when I, when oh, I, I'm sorry, go no, ahead. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, when I first contacted, the first person I contacted was my partner, Cherie Wilson. Um, I asked her what she thought about the idea, and I know she's, uh, she, she knows a lot about accounting, so she's actually our financial officer. She deals with the money of the business. Um, okay. She was the one who, yeah, who helped me to further develop uh, the concept, because we don't only do things in China, and what we do is uh, it's bigger than the market in China because the go requested is actually to help people who are living abroad also to get things from China. You know, like we have uh, customers who, who own small businesses back home and they want to get things that um, they usually buy through AliExpress. Sometimes they've, they've been ripped off buying through AliExpress and 
others, they just don't know how to get these goods at a discounted price. So they go to our website and they request the product. They give us the dimensions, the quantity, the quality that they want. And we find the factories and we give them a quote. And if they are satisfied with the quote, we go ahead and we procure the items and ship it back to them. Okay, that's what's up, man. So what... Yeah. Okay, this is a great, uh, actually a great hat. But what uh, did you, what motivates you guys to shoot, uh, to shoot the WeChat platform? Because you're really active on WeChat. Yeah, we've seen that before. We've seen a lot of your uh, <laughs> ads and everything. Yeah, you know, we choose WeChat because, well, living in China, WeChat is life. <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is, yeah. This is, you know, my life is is so tied to WeChat in every way. My bank cards are linked to it. If I want to buy a ticket home, I, I use WeChat. If I'm trying to get a taxi, I use WeChat. So I thought if my life is so linked to it and I'm not such a big technology fan, then I think everyone should have WeChat and live closely, like attached to their WeChat. So we thought maybe we should market our platform on WeChat and we'll get a good following, especially the foreigners. This is very true because I am very attached to WeChat and we put, there we we put a lot of our shows. There we go. That's how, that's how I found out about your show, actually. Yeah, man. <laughs> so what form of payment can a Go request it uh, can accept? Okay, we can accept Alipay and WeChat Pay at the moment. And uh, some of our customers, for example, back home, they can do bank transfers or Western Union. All right. Oh, okay. no, I'm asking the question because, you know, a lot of people that I know from abroad don't use WeChat. Because they kind okay. of scare about the security when it comes to the informations. Yeah. So, like, yeah. are you guys uh, succeed to overcome um, that challenge? Well, the good thing is that for the customers that we have back home, we have a good relationship with them. So we can ask them to actually do bank transfers and it's, it's fine. They don't think they're being scammed. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that was what we wanted to get to that. How we know y'all ain't conning people is what we're trying to yeah. say. Um, I know, you, I know. You say you, but the, uh, the things get me is that uh, your two partners are uh, Jamaican. So, like, this is a completely Jamaican-run uh, business, I'm assuming. Yes. Um, yes so how did you – Jamaica. Okay. So how did you guys get around uh, needing a Chinese partner here in mainland China as far as operating your business? Well, the good thing is that we're online, so we can. That helps us to forego a lot of the the rigmarole as it as it um as it pertains to having a Chinese partner. Okay. We register it back home, and by placing by placing it online, we put it out there in the general domain of the world. It's not uh, China only, which is why we don't only do business in China, and we mostly do business with foreigners. So. We try not to, you know, to be too caught up in the Chinese landscape because we know how things are as it relates to businesses and their formation and stuff in China. And uh, we, we've, we've been moving to have, have our business registered in Hong Kong mm -hmm. because what scared us um, initially is that we don't want to give away controlling interests of the company because the minute you get a Chinese partner, most times you start losing grasp of your own business. So, yeah. And this has been one of one of the hindrances to, to us growing because um, we've had people show interest in um, helping us to grow. We've met with a social media guru. Actually, she does um, marketing for Disney English and some other platforms. Uh -huh. And she wanted to, uh, to help us to grow. And she she said that she could have uh, some of her friends to help sponsor us, to help with the partnerships. But we really try to forego going down that route. We really want to have a, a WFOE, a wholly foreign owned enterprise. So we're, we're now looking to have it registered in Hong Kong so that we can be, uh, we, we don't have to look over our shoulders. <laughs> That's what's up. I feel yeah. you. It seems like you guys, like by going online, like you said, you kind of skipped over a lot of red tape. Uh, what are some other yeah. um, benefits of basically focusing on uh, online if you're trying to start up a business here? Okay, I, I think by focusing online, uh, one of the benefits of that is that everyone is online, you know? Yeah. As you walk around, you see everyone is always in their phone. So if you want to get someone's attention, putting up a billboard is just not going to work. Um, putting up any form of advertisement outside of physical ad, it seems pointless because everyone's eyes, it's 
yeah, yeah, always yeah. fixed to, to the phone. So, so we thought if we're going to get a market, instead of having a physical advertisements out there, physical posters, we just make electronic posters and we try to send them within the internet, within that sphere, because we know that's where everyone really is. Oh, okay. Right. That's so what's up. How, me, I wonder how different is this type of uh, company compared to what you've been experiencing like in the past or in another country? What challenges you have to overcome here? Well, we, <laughs> we had to overcome a lot of challenges. For example, when we started developing the website, um, the website is developed by um, Norman Sandcroft, who is our chief developer and also a co-founder of the company. And some problems we faced, uh, for example, you know, that the app is, should be accessible in China because some of the functions are exclusive before people in China, for example, requesting products and stuff like that in China. And uh, a lot of the add-ons that you need for the website, you get them from Google and uh, some of the forms, the security forms and stuff like that to make sure that you're human. Like oh. these, uh, most of these come from Google and Google just won't work in China. So we struggled a lot trying to find alternatives to all the, the, the traditional add-ons to make the website actually functional. It took, I think it took two months of us constantly going on the website over and over and over until we figured out um, which uh, plugins would actually work uh, functionally in China. Hmm. Oh, wow. It sounds like... Uh... <laughs> A headache of, at, the, at the at the beginning. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It, and yeah. and, it, and it, as we're still growing, it's still a headache because we have challenges that we're trying to overcome now. As as we've been uh, working and trying to build our customer base abroad and and here domestically. I mean, uh, coincidentally, we just uh, had had a customer yesterday who you know wanted phones and he sent the request two days ago. And mm -hmm. he received this phone. He received this phone yesterday, so it took only a day to get the phone to him. So we've been trying to be as efficient as possible. We've tried to be as efficient as possible, but um, we still have challenges. And one of the challenges we have, and uh, which is what we're trying, we've been discussing now as partners, is to get a Chinese intern in the company because as much as we want to forego um, having a Chinese. These intern or even to partner with a Chinese, it's impossible to succeed as a business without having a Chinese person to help you with some of the logistics of the things we need to do here. Especially the <coughs> shipping, right? Yes. Uh, well, not exactly the shipping. We can do that. But as it comes down to negotiating with factories, for example, for larger orders, for example, we have uh, a girl in, um, in, in the States and she wants hair. She, she's starting her own hair business and, you know, black people love to wear their hair. So, um, this is very true. but she wants it. Oh, you know it, you know it. Boy. <laughs> so she, she, she wants to brand, she wants to brand it as her own company. So what we're doing is we're helping her with branding. Um, we help her to brand it and also to find the factory and, uh, we package it and ship it to her. And all she has to do is sell because it comes prepackaged and branded as her own business. Now, to do this, it would be it would be impossible to do it completely without a Chinese person because we need a Chinese person to help us to negotiate with the factory. Like we know the person who sells the hair, we know the factory person, but we can't get the best price. We'll never get the best price yeah. until we get a until we get a Chinese person in there. So we've we've understood that this is a serious limitation with us and it will affect our profit margin. So we're we're thinking about getting Chinese interns now to try and get the company to to grow a little bit more and to be more efficient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And where? Because you've been talking about the United States, about Jamaica, about oh. China, of course. <laughs> but where do you envision uh, custo uh, customers uh, using your app? The most. Um, actually, I think in the near future, I think people will be using it mostly in Jamaica because uh, right now in Jamaica we don't have a lot of apps that help you to buy things online I mean you can buy from Amazon and eBay but then you know it's sometimes you don't know what you're getting you know and a lot of times you do get, still get things from China and you pay much more from it you pay, pay much more for it so I think what we're trying to do is just to be the app that they will use in Jamaica to go and get these things that they would normally get through eBay or whatever
You're listening to another episode of the No Name Podcast, or NNP. NNP is a show that aims to bring the world's black diaspora to the forefront and highlights their unique lifestyles while connecting their common cultures. The perspectives of the diaspora are valuable, and no one can tell our stories better than us. So thanks for hearing ours. We appreciate your support and encourage you to share. NNP. Many voices, one sound. Peace. You know what, man? We've been talking about all this business, man. We didn't even get a chance to uh, ask you uh, what brought you to China in the first place. <laughs> oh, I, I, <laughs> yeah, thank you, because I was getting bored talking about that. Um, <laughs> I mean, we all like money. We all like hey, money. Hey, but, I, uh, I, yeah, man, what brought you I out understand. here? Okay, you know, I came to China initially in 2012 to study at the Communication University of China. Mm-hmm. Um, came on scholarship, uh, funny story. Um, didn't really apply to the school, but, you know, I ended up here anyway. And uh, some, yeah, you can call it luck and some can call it um, the Chinese way. You know, you apply to one school and you get accepted to another one. But um, <laughs> I ended up here and I liked it. So I ended up staying longer and uh, with, now I've gone on to do my PhD. So that is what is keeping me here at the moment. But I, I know that I won't leave China for a while, so I'm not going to put a, a exit date on, on myself as yet. How, is, how have you been interacting uh, with Chinese people here as far as talking about your country and um, you know, Jamaica and the, and the Caribbean at large? Um, you know, being black is a very interesting experience in China because the first thing I have to, I have to deconstruct what many Chinese people think about black people and I have to deconstruct where they think black people come from. Mm. So the first, yeah, so most times I meet someone, I tell them I'm from Jamaica and a best case scenario is that they know what Jamaica is and they'll say, oh, Bolta, you know, say you see in Bolt because they're, they're familiar with them. Yeah, but, yeah, then, yeah. but then the minute I ask them, oh, so you know Jamaica, they're like, oh, yeah, yeah. Pedro, you're African, and then I'm, I'm, I'm back to uh, the beginning now, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> but um, what I what I've done though is to whenever I have people being uh, ignorant about the culture, I try to share things with them, you know, that some of Jamaica Jamaica's achievements, some of the the famous people. I try to show them where Jamaica is on the map. Yeah, I've I've downloaded a map on my phone and I just show people, and that has helped a lot <laughs> because. A lot of people don't actually know about this region called the Caribbean. So I, I just try to show them this region and explain to them how this region is and what languages we speak and stuff like that. Because uh, I've gone as far as being told that I'm from Latin America, which is not entirely true. And so people think I speak Spanish. Really? Latin absolutely... America? That's yeah. the first yeah. time I've heard that. That's well, I, I've, I've had that a lot. And, you know, and uh, so one one guy, I told him I'm from Jamaica, and he's like, ah, oh. and he said Caribbean in Chinese. So I was like, oh, finally, it's it's happening. Someone knows Jamaica. Yeah, and then yeah, he, yeah. Started, he started to speak Spanish, and I was like, oh, you lost me, you lost me. <laughs> and then he said, he said, oh, I thought Spanish was your, natural, your, your native language. Aren't you from Latin America? And I'm like, ah, no, I'm not. Wow. Um, so, yeah, so I had to explain uh, the whole history of... Um, English and Spanish and French and how some islands speak a different language and you know it's 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 a, it's work it's work for any black person they'll tell you it's a lot of work living here being black and try to explain where you're from especially if you're not from the mother okay and vice versa what did you learn from the Chinese people around you uh, what I've learned actually yeah. uh, one of the things I learned being here um, is that <laughs> Chinese people are very careful about what they say. Usually, I used to be, and uh, in some way I still am, I usually say whatever is on my mind and I usually don't care if it, if it affects someone. You know, I'm usually, I, I'm usually a little mean because I'm blunt. I'm a very blunt guy. But being in China, I've learned that you have to be use tact when you speak to people. And you have to consider feelings because, you know, um, one of the things I learned is that 
if someone tells you, okay, you're very good, you're very good, sometimes you're you're actually very bad. And they're just trying to to spare your feelings, you know. So I've learned I've learned how to navigate that whole scene and to sometimes tell people, you're very good, you know, English is great, your English is wonderful. Just to 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 to, to, to fit in and and let them know I'm I'm, I'm learning your culture and I, I understand how you how you communicate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Well, you've been here for years. Um, have you noticed a change? Um, and when I say change, I mean, like, have you seen more people uh, knowing uh, where the Caribbean is and what the Caribbean islands are? I mean, four years, I guess, isn't a long, long time, but it's, it's a little It isn't time. a long time. But, you know, actually, a lot has changed since the first time I got to China since now, because huh, when I got here first, as I said, Yushin Bolt was the hot thing. And then in 2012, he in 2015 he came back to China again. So this whole region of and he he dominated, as we say in Jamaica, he dominated. He dominated the the track events, and you know more people start becoming more familiar with Jamaica. And I guess some people don't assume and they go and look. So I find that more and more people now they are aware of the Caribbean. You know, maybe they don't know the countries by name, but if you tell them that you're from the Caribbean, they 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 have a sense of geography of where you you're from actually. That's uh-huh. what's up. Man. That's great. Well, one more yeah. question: If what would you say to the young Jamaican who just got off the plane and is trying to trying to find his way in uh, China, is trying to make his fortune? I'll make his fortune. I'm still pretty <laughs> poor, so I can't give him a lot of advice. But I can I can tell him though that there's no linear path to success. You there's no uh, one way that you have to use to be successful. You have to when you're here, you'll find something that you're interested in and try to use your passion uh, to make money. Don't try to struggle and teach English and do something that's probably going to stress you out. You know, try to find something you're passionate about. This is China. It's a new frontier. Um, it's basically a little unexplored and anything that you're interested in. If you're a good singer, you can find some club and some hotel to sing in. You know, whatever you're good at, just try and exploit that here because it's new here and it, you're going to be well sought after if you're good at what you do. You don't need to try and go into business. You can you can use your talents. That's what's this up, is great. Man. This is great. Yeah. All right, so let the people know um, what is your what's the name of your business and uh, where can we find you? Okay, uh, the business is called Go Request It, and you can find us online GoRequestIt.com. And if you find us online, you can get links to our WeChat page. So if you're in China listening to this, you can add us, subscribe to us on WeChat, and we'll promise not to annoy you with ads. We'll <laughs> say <laughs> okay. All right, we'll, we will annoy you with ads, but um, you'll see something you like, you know. So just go and follow us. Go to the website, gorequestit.com. That's G-O-R-E-Q-U-E-S-T-I-T dot C-O-M. I'm, I'm trying to make sure I spelled that correctly. Okay, <laughs> <that's right. laughs> we will put yeah. all the information on the, the No Name oh, Podcast. Exactly, but so, we will make sure okay. we don't spell it wrong either. So. Oh, <laughs> um, if you do, if you do. Yeah, so where can we find you? Uh, uh, I'm trying to not be found at the moment. Um, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm around Beijing. I mean, I, there's nothing relating to the business that um, would require anyone to actually see me physically. But I'm actually living on campus now, so I'm at my university. Ah, I see. Be on them streets. All right, I, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I would like to say, I don't know what uh, many years you still have for your PhD, but congratulations, because... Uh, I think you pretty you still pretty young and you're doing a PhD. Sounds like I'm a pretty young. Thank you <laughs> no, for being generous. All right, I'm, I'm cool. being Chinese right now. <laughs> you, you, you are because last night one of my friends told me I look like I'm I'm in my early thirties. You know, so Ooh, that's I don't stress. No, that's, that's stress. Yeah, I need some sleep. I, you know, and yeah, I I I don't get a lot of sleep now with, with all this exercising, but I'm I'm working on it. <laughs> all right, all right. 
All right, everybody, that was O'Shane Thorpe of Go Requested sitting down with us. Thank you so much for uh, taking the time to speak to us, man. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, no problem. Uh, anytime. All right, man, we'll catch you later. Peace out. All right. Uh, uh, hey, hey, uh, quick, uh, if you need anything, any electronics, just go over to Go Requested and Go Request it, all right? Shameless all plug. Right. I like it. <laughs> I like it. All right. <laughs> Hi, bye, Ocean. All right. Peace, all right. All right, take care.